Do you know what the vehicle of the future looks like? If you think it's a time-traveling sports car, think again. On this episode, we go under the hood with Continental to look at how vehicles are becoming servers on wheels. And we look around the corner at what car makers must consider as they prepare for a software-defined future. So let's start the engines for this episode of All Things Automotive. Go on a cloud innovation journey with me, Stefano Marzani, as I'm joined by guest experts and mobility leaders to look at the drivers of transformation on All Things Automotive. Today, I'm here with Martin Stamm. Hi, Stefano. Hi, hi, Martin. It's such a pleasure having you here. So yeah. first of all, let's introduce you are principal expert for software architecture in Continental, right? Right. And yeah. most of all, it's one, you are one of the person we worked most in the last uh, year or so. It was really great fun we had. And yeah, we, we worked really on a common target to achieve this transformation towards software-defined vehicles. There you go. Yeah, and definitely Continental cannot do such a transformation on its own. We need a tech company in the partnership or cooperation, and that's why we have this deep cooperation with, uh, well, a company which does waste more stuff beyond selling books. Yeah, like maybe Conti is not just selling tires. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but Let's explain a bit about uh, what yeah. this transformation means. And I start with my first very small project at when I entered Continental some 20 years ago. So I did a small control unit for climatization of eight a bit, vehicle. Eight-bit controller? Oh, no, 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 16-bit. <laughs> we were pretty comfortable here. And it had 4K of RAM, 32K of ROM, wow. <laughs> and... At that time, I had been experienced uh, developer for front-end, back-end solutions and uh, using latest technologies. And I felt like entering a complete new universe. Yeah. And uh, those architectures we had in the uh, vehicle, the electronic architectures, were pretty simple at that time. We had 10 to 15 of such control units, each of them having a dedicated function. Yeah, and it, 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 life was easy. And then within the last decade, the software functions in the vehicle tremendously exploded, grew. Right? They, they really exploded, like you say. And the industry reacted in a way that it added new control units for new features. And uh, all of a sudden, features also distributed across compute nodes. And now we have 80 to 100 nodes in such a high-end vehicle. Complexity is not manageable anymore. And that is where we now start to centralize, again, the compute nodes with the target of having one single centralized computer. One big computer for a car. Exactly. The architecture we can see here is comprised of three building blocks the vehicle computer, the cloud, and the workbench. And using this big picture, we define a complete ecosystem yeah. for developing and operating distributed applications for the vehicle of the future. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. And probably yeah. it's what the sector needs, uh, to be very honest. So this consolidation, and we hear customers asking for more cloud native for exactly these reasons, right? Cloud native in automotive. And how do you see AWS positioning for that? I mean, I think AWS can bring in the learnings from the IT industry. Pretty much some of the problems uh, we see now in automotive systems, you have seen before some 10 to 15 uh, years ago. Uh, For example, achieving systems which can be updated fast and mature. Uh, That works best with architectures which have small interoperating yeah. microservices and well-defined and mature interfaces. Yeah, And I think that is uh, something which you can bring. And uh, another thing you can bring in is about workflows. For example, yeah. if you take what we are discussing with uh, Sophie, we are discussing of developing a service in a virtual environment in the cloud and test it, validate it in the cloud, and once it's mature, you deploy it to the vehicle. Yeah, absolutely. It's so irrelevant. Uh, And uh, if we execute automotive software in cloud, 
of course, we need to execute it with the same properties mm. that we will find in the embedded edge inside the vehicle. So, and how is this important? What's environmental parity into so, such a key element for this transformation? Well, I think what you achieve with the environmental parity is a significant reduction of the turnaround times. Of, and like you said, you need a parity between cloud and embedded computer. But of course, on the other side, being strictly pair will not work. You cannot replicate everything down to the atomic level. Yeah. Um, that's overkill. That's, uh, that's awesome. And it's not just a theory, right? I think mm. you already have implemented part of this architecture. You described the, you know, in your operations. Yeah, exactly. We already have a use case which we have developed. Uh, which is now used in series development projects. It's the first workflow, so to say, which we have in production. And this use case is about developing automated driving functions. Uh, it's an essential part for the automated driving functions to have a field operation test, which yeah. is called like this. And uh, what you are doing is, while you are driving the vehicle in the real world, you record the sensor data and copy those recorded sensor data into a data lake in the cloud. And then based on your actions of the vehicle, you calculate a performance indicator of your algorithms. Yeah. And then you can optimize your algorithms and re-simulate and revalidate yeah. the algorithms based on the originally recorded sensor data. Yeah, absolutely. This looks like uh, this big loop we discussed many times. Yeah, in this, exactly. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. in, this, in this show already. So big loop, parity, an ecosystem that is proper of the automotive. How we can help our customer to enter the, this new era yeah, I think what we all need to understand is that the transformation towards software-defined vehicles is happening right now. Yes. We, we, it ha it's happening right now and we are part of it. Yes. This kind of transformation, however, must follow an ecosystem and partnership approach. No one can do that alone. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and that's why we engage in initiatives like Sophie or the uh, Eclipse Software Defined Vehicle. Yeah, that's a super interesting, a super exciting scenario you are just presenting. So, Martin, thank you so much. It's been really a pleasure having you with us today. Yeah, and uh, looking you. forward to this future, software thank defined you future. Thank for, you for having me here and thank you for this nice and, and funny interview. Thank you. Digital transformation is hitting all the industries. But what are the specific challenges of the automotive industry? Joining me now, Kimberly Kulesh, our leader for the Industry Analyst Relations team. So welcome, Kimberly. Thank you. It's great to be here. Probably you heard that I'm a little bit obsessed about this uh, software-defined vehicle topic, right? <laughs> I have heard that. <laughs> yeah. So from the tech perspective, consolidation, abstraction, virtualization, continuous update, and Continental talks about building up a platform on top of it. So that's interesting, right? Absolutely. So what's the analyst's point of view? Sure. So one of the major benefits to OEMs that SBD Automotive talked about in their recent report is that software-defined vehicles are going to enable more brand control and the ability yeah. to impact brand loyalty. So how so? So because of the dealer distribution model, most interactions with the customer are handled primarily by the dealership, meaning that most OEMs rely on the dealers to be the steward of their vehicle brand with customers, where software-defined vehicle is really going to allow these OEMs mm. to directly personalize and update customer experiences, which is a really important step to deploy campaigns for delighting and really retaining these customers. customers yeah. So a lot of important effect on the value chain, right? So this technology that enters and modifies the value chain, supply chain and stuff. So those are really great examples, right? Yeah. And what do OEM needs to do and think as they prepare for this uh, software-defined revolution? Yeah, so as you said, it's a revolution. You know, SDV will be transformational, but that transformation takes time. So software-defined vehicle was first included in the 2021 Gartner hype cycle for connected electric and autonomous vehicles. And it estimates that the mainstream adoption time is five to 10 years. 
Automakers are changing their vehicle's mm-hmm. entire EE architecture to enable the software to be used to deliver these new and improved functionality yeah. over the life cycle. And uh, we know it takes time for them to send to, to, to produce a new vehicle, right? So yeah, it's, it's not quick. <laughs> yeah, it's not quick. So absolutely. And what's the expected outcome? So, you know, it's not just about delivering a vehicle to get someone from point A to point B. Now it's about the vehicle and the experiences that can be delivered during the duration of that drive. So automakers need to think about how they can overcome their historical innovation process that used to be a top-down waterfall, which now needs to be much more agile. Yeah. You know, they're going to need to figure out how to adopt that agile working style, but also how to embrace top talent in the software sector. It's really interesting to see a software is really entering. Software is eating the world, right? As somebody yeah, was saying about absolutely. that. So software-defined vehicles comes with challenges and benefits. And uh, why should companies uh, look at AWS uh, as a platform to build their services applications? Yeah, so if the amount of data needed to do software-defined vehicles is just staggering. So having a strong cloud computing platform infrastructure is really critical. AWS is appealing because we have the agility, the elasticity, and the global skill that these automakers need as they continue their SDV journey. Yeah, and we need to talk their language. So uh, I think it's very important when we start to talk about big loop, abstraction, electric, electronic architecture, we really need to have uh, industry expertise as well. Absolutely. So, and I think sometimes uh, we can give them a little bit extra help, right? Sure. We have an automotive specific professional services team that is from industry experts who can really help these companies bridge the skills gap mm-hmm. if that's something that they're challenged with right now or can help them transition to more agile ways of working. And all of these things really ladder up to why Frost & Sullivan named AWS as the global company of the year for 2022 in the automotive cloud service platform industry. So pretty exciting uh, being here in this time, right? (laughs) There is no better time to be in automotive. (laughs) Yeah, definitely, definitely. So thank you so much uh, for providing us this really interesting point of views, Kimberly. Absolutely. It's been great to chat. I hope you enjoyed our look at the transformations uh, that companies like Continental are accelerating. Let's close this episode with three key takeaways. One thing is clear, software is truly eating the car. To help our customers adapt, AWS brings the speed and agility of the cloud to the vehicle edge, providing environmental parity. Second, AWS-enabled SDV platforms will drive quality and safety. Vehicle software that is born on the cloud facilitates test-driven development. And scenarios with hundreds, even thousands of automated test cases executed with every build. Last, SDV promises to bring more frequent updates to customers in the front of engaging features in the vehicle. When you combine automotive DevOps using platforms from customers like Continental Sketch, OEMs are positioned to produce real, radical innovation. Join us again as we continue to look at the drivers of this epic industry transformation in this season of All Things Automotive.